This is going to be your guide for using Sandaconda in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Where to begin with this Pokemon? Because competitively, it's pretty wacky. It seems like Game Freak was going for theme over strength with Shotgun Sand Lizard, but the Sand Spit ability is actually a lot more usable than people might think. So, Sand Spit. Creates a sandstorm when it's hit by an attack. That just sounds like a gimmicky sand stream with extra steps, but in Generation 8, this is really useful, and when you're thinking about the setup, it also means you kind of get the sand to activate when you want it to. So for the most part, you know, if you're just trading with a regular Pokemon, they hit you, Sand Spit activates on the first turn, it's gonna be no different than Sand Stream. But if you go for Stealth Rocks, they go for Stealth Rocks, maybe they go for Swords Dance, maybe they go for some setup, it means you're actually able to get an extra turn out of the Sand Stream, or the Sand Storm. So let's say you have a Sand Stream Pokemon, two hit KO, your ally comes in. There's only gonna be a couple turns of Sand left. That if the opponent goes for a sword stance and then hits you with a water type move or super effective move, you get one hit KO'd, Sand Spit still activates. So that means you buy that extra turn of Sand Spit like that. Now what's better is if they use a weather setting move. So I mean, you set Sand Stream on a Hippowdon, they come in, they use Max Geyser, that's rain, that's a super effective hit. Well now it's going to be rain set on the field. But what happens is, if you knock out a Sandaconda this way, Sand Spit activates, Rain goes away, now you have your Sand, and now you can play around it. So Sandaconda is going to be a really interesting setup Pokemon to have Sand on your team, and it might even find some like weather shenanigans in doubles in that regard. But at the same time, it's just a much weaker Hippowdon. Hippowdon has more hit points, more attack, slightly less defense, which doesn't matter because of the much more hit points, and then slightly more special defense, but again, much more hit points. So Sandaconda is pretty frail, but it does bring a few extra things to the table. Before we get into the moveset though, do want to talk about the typing, water, grass, ice, standard weaknesses right there. Also, it works for hail too, that you eat a max hail storm, sand spit activates, Cool, now you have sand, and now you can make your revenge. Immune to electric, resistant to poison rock, so not the best resistances on the pure ground typing. Weaknesses, not super common, not the worst, it's just a very straightforward, decent typing. Decent to good, because the ground Pokemon stats usually back it up pretty well. So, this is the Sandaconda you're going to see, like, 95% of the time, and it's mostly because, like, Glare is just really good. You can paralyze ground type Pokemon with Glare. This just hits everything except for Electric because Electric as a typing can't be paralyzed. But I mean, like, you just have reliable glare, boom, the opponent's paralyzed. And depending on your speed investment, you can be faster than them. So I was looking into it, 125 base speed Pokemon at level 50 with speed beneficial nature. You just need to put 52 effort values to outspeed that. So depending on what you want to speed creep against, pretty much you glare almost anything, stealth rocks, and then you're going to be set up, you get knocked out, and then you try to preserve your Sandstorm. Other than that, you have Earthquake, which is why I'm just saying go bulky, max hit points, max attack. Because of Sand Spit, we don't want to be on the field for too long. We want to go into our next Pokemon that's going to make use of Sand, but if they're just kind of like setting up or doing things, it's good to pressure them with a little bit of damage on that Earthquake. And then last move, uh, you can put Coil here because like Glare, Stealth Rocks, Coil, now the opponent has to act. So now we're kind of getting rid of the idea of stay, like getting off the field as soon as possible, and it's like two coils on a glared Pokemon, Earthquake KO them, something weird like that. This Pokemon like just looks a lot more threatening than it really is when you're coiling, or you can just add in some extra coverage moves. We have a decent amount of them, like Random Outrage is pretty cool. Iron Head is interesting because Fairy-type Pokemon take 160 power damage on a super effective hit, but Stab Earthquake is 150, so that's a thing. We have rock coverage if you want to run that so like the last move is just a weird whatever you want to put on the sandaconda we can also look at its move set it again it has like an interesting move set there's some things you can do here but for the most part you just want like use your three moves set up gg maybe fire fang in case of, like a ferrothorn stealth rocks lead that way at least you have some kind of damage against them and then just like coverage doing things headbutt is a possibility because then you can like para flinch them but then once again like you're wasting turns on your sandstorm which means the best option probably going to be smooth rock i don't think focus ash is needed because you know you, you are going hit point invested unless it's like an overwhelmingly powerful super effective hit in which case we don't do anything but we get sand off and we weren't going to do anything anyways uh citrus berry means we might be around for too long so it's like glare stealth rocks 
get KO'd, smooth rock for as many turns as you can for the uh, sand stream, then you go into a Pokemon like Excadrill, Sand Rush, Sand Force, or a tanky rock type Pokemon that wants that special defense, and then you just try to sweep it off of the Sandaconda, especially now that the opponent is glared, and then every ally coming, or not every ally, every opponent's Pokemon coming in is also going to be taking chip damage from the Stealth Rocks, which means Sand Force Choice Scarf is going to be outspeeding, out damaging everything, or Sand Rush Life Orb is going to be super crazy as well. This is also when you Dynamax on the Excadrill, and then you just have multiple turns of being unstoppable. So that's going to be like the big play on the Sandaconda, and that's mostly what the Sandaconda is going to do. But here's a little bit of extra moveset shenanigans, because, wait a second. Minimize. Thought Game Freak hated evasion. And yet they just splash in Minimize on this random Pokemon, and it also has the Shed Skin ability. So, 33% chance to have its status cured at the end of each turn. Which means you have a 1 in 3 chance, rest, wake up, full health, for free. So I was looking at it like Coil, Moranga Berry, so we're boosting our defense, and then we're getting like a plus one special defense, that way we can just survive against special attackers, and then we just tank it out. And after like, you know, we hit high plus five plus six, Rock Blast just comes in and cleans up the opponent. Why Rock Blast instead of Rock Slide? It's more damage. So on average, Rock Blast is 79.2 base power. Also, it's just really convenient when you get to break through a Mimikyu, Disguise and then still get a little bit of extra damage so it turns Mimikyu into a two-hit KO instead of a potential three-hit KO Depending on how many coils that you have I don't think we're going to be in like focus sash shredding territory But maybe a very frail ice type Pokemon like if it's a focus sash Weavile or something the rock blast will actually KO that uh, Cloyster has too much defense so it's just gonna be weird, but overall it's more damage so you can run it like that and coil means that we're gonna get the accuracy so that Rock Blast accuracy doesn't even matter. Weird stuff happening. So just like coil until you're safe, minimize so the opponent's special attackers have even less to do against us. Unfortunately, they can Dynamax, so the opponent has wasted Dynamax. This moveset gets even better. And then you just play the RNG. Like, if you're at three coils and you rest, you're going to be able to wake up at the full three turns against a physical attacker and not care. If you get the early wake up, that's just better. Turn that into a minimize, rest again, and then GG until the Rock Blast plus six just ruins the opponent's day. Or you can just kind of go for full defensive investment. You know, why mess around with special defense? Have a special defense tank, maybe even like Toxapex or something. That way it's like Toxapex. Actually, no, I was about to say, special defense Toxapex, if you would eat a Thunderbolt, you go into Sandaconda, but Sandaconda doesn't want to eat special attacks but it can absorb the Thunderbolt, so weird weird matchups can happen. If it's Rotom Heat, it's not ideal, but Sanaconda... Now, nah, I don't think Sanaconda will be okay with a Rotom Heat. Double Overheat without any special defense investment because it's so low could be it if we're not running uh, Moringa Berry. So, consider what to do. Just, like, make sure you get rid of the opponent's special attackers, then, like, full defense tank Sanaconda comes in. Same rules apply when it comes to double... And it's weird. This is why I don't like about, like, what Game Freak did with a lot of the Pokemon. They're very one-dimensional. You know, the best use you're going to get out of Sanaconda is going to be full hit points, full defense, undying against physical attackers. And fortunately, in the Generation 8 metagame, it's mostly physical attackers. So you're going to be pretty good against them. However, it's like, well, what do I do about special attackers? Like, you have very high strengths, but also a lot more vulnerabilities in just like random Generation 8 strategies than we've seen in the past. You kind of can't cover for everything as much as you want to. I mean, it's Generation 8. Where's the power creep when Hippowdon is just a tankier special defense Pokemon, it has instant healing on the slack off, and it also has Curse Amnesia. It, it does, whoa, Coos, Curse Amnesia. So, it just does everything better, it sets up better, and then Sanaconda's weaker just because Game Freak hates evasion? Like, Rush Shed Skin is really cool, and it can pop off, but it just doesn't feel as reliable. But if you can play in that risk and then find success, this Pokemon is going to get unstoppable. So the Citrus Berry just kind of guarantees an extra coil before you rest, maybe thread in that Minimize, and then you just do your thing until you win as a full defensive monster. So I want to just do some damage calculations, some comparisons and stuff. This is Sanaconda eating some, you know, super effective hits, so 92 attack, 120 base power, that's actually like a reasonable hit. So max hit point invested, defensive nature, special defense, 61% to 81% on a physical attack, 61% to 72%, or 68 to, yeah, 81, so this means that we can just see much more tankiness, well actually not much more, but a fair bit tankier on the hip out on. 
So that's pretty nice to see. And then specially, yeah, it's a 47% compared to the 56%. So there we go. And Hippowdon can run the Moranga Berry and set up and then heal and have more things. And what I've learned is that you do need Stockpile. You do need Amnesia. You need like plus three special defense before Hippowdon doesn't have any threat from special attackers anymore. If we're capped at plus one on a Moranga Berry, things get sketchy for the Santa Conda. So you're really going to have to hard play to remove the opponent's special attackers, which is possible in 6v6 and a little trickier in 3v3. Then I was looking at some other things that we have with the Santa Conda, Dragapult, Draco Meteor. Fortunately, it's not a true two-hit KO because this is like its biggest hit, and then it's going to drop off the damage from there. Surf, though. So choice specs, Surf, 100 special attack non-stab. That's, like, not super uncommon, and it is a two-hit KO at the plus one. So, we get hit with a Surf, Moringa Berry gets activated, and then we get KO'd. So, super effective Surf, Giga Drain, really anything is it can be problematic like that. And we aren't running the Sand Spit, so the opponent can have, like, Sunny Day Solar Beam against us in some weird situations. Even, then like, Draco back-to-back -back Draco Meteor KOs us. So we already need the Moringa Berry set up. That just kind of shows the frailty. And this is full hit points, full special defense. So special attackers can kind of blow us up. And that's really not that great. So Shadow Ball. It's going to take multiple Shadow Balls. So it's like Shadow Ball, Moringa Berry, and then you're forced to rest. So you only get like plus one from the Coil. And then you just kind of have to hope that things get better from there. But even at plus one, then the damage is going to be consistent. That it's still a three hit KO pretty much all the time. So that's when you're just playing the game of like hoping you wake up, hoping you can get a minimize, hoping something can happen. And Dragapult isn't even like one of the best special attackers in the game. So that's another thing to take into consideration. I did want to look at water sweepers though. And special attacking water sweepers aren't super common in Generation 8, which is nice. Like Rotom Wash with Hydro Pump, that's just going to make a joke out of you. Vaporeon probably just sets up better against you with Acid Armor into your coil or something, and then it just becomes a complete stall match. And then Inteleon, that's a lot of special attack. There we go. That's the stab 125 special attack. Full hit point for full special defense is not going to matter. Uh, we're still fairly slow, so just like random Pokemon outspeeding and then doing damage to us can be a thing. And then Grass type, super effective hits. Fortunately, we don't see as much Ice Beam because there's not like Garchomp and Dragonite running around. But, like, an Ice-type hit can still be problematic. And then we do have to worry about, like, physical ice as we're getting set up on the coils. So there is a lot of vulnerability with the Pokemon. And that's why people. That's why you're going to see this mostly. You see this into Excadrill. That's going to be the team. And then it's actually pretty effective at that. Glare can screw people over super hard, too. That, like, oh, 25% chance for full paralysis. You just don't get to play Pokemon for that turn. And then Santaconda can actually capitalize KOs. Maybe find that coil inside of it. And if it's, like... Not dying for some strange reason, Sand Spit might reactivate? I don't know. Like, weird, weird stuff happening, and then we just have set up to make it into a sweeper. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.